Hey traders and welcome back. Today I've got a quick video lesson for you guys. Uh, I'm going to answer a question from a student of the mastery course. And here is the question. I'm not sure if they would want me showing their name. Definitely not their email. So I've blocked that out. But anyway, the question is what I wanted to check was how can we find a high and low in regular trading hours when the cash market is open? Let's say for DAX, which is a German index, they want to get the high and low between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. GMT instead of the whole 24 hours. So this was in response to uh, my previous lesson I put on the channel, which was a day trading tool made in PineScript. And that was this script here. Now this script is drawing yesterday's high, that's the red line, yesterday's low, that's the blue line. And this trading sessions opening price, that's the white line. And then about a 60% ATR above and below that opening price. This is just to assist day traders in gauging the volatility and potential distance that a market might be able to move during a trading session. So go and check that video out if you're interested in this tool. But anyway, in today's lesson, I'm showing you something slightly different. And this script is drawing the high and the low and the closing price of yesterday's trading session within a given time frame or time session. So a slightly different application of the techniques taught in the last video. So I thought this was an interesting application of time-based um, filters and functions in Pine. So I figured I'd make a video about this to put up in the course and on YouTube so that we can all learn from this question. So let's get rid of this script. Um, again, there'll be a link in the video description to that lesson if you're curious. Let's open the source code of the script and I'll break it down. So in order to track the high and low and closing price of a previous day's um, price action within a time session, we can't actually use the security function for this. It's not appropriate for this application. The security function is used for referencing higher time frame information. And so in my day trading tool, I actually use the security function to request yesterday's high and low. In this particular script, that's not appropriate because we don't wanna get the high and low over the past 24 hour period. We want to get the high and low based on a time session. So how do we go about this if we're not using the security function? Well. Let me explain. So the first thing I'm doing here is getting our user inputs. We're just getting the session to monitor and the time zone we want to apply to this time session. This color session is just a debug option and it will just paint the background color of my chart to highlight the zone that we're tracking. So you can see here using this trading day as an example, the low is saved and the high is saved and the closing price is saved and then drawn over the next day's session but I've left this off by default. It's just purely for debug purposes. So the first thing we need to do is determine if a price bar falls inside the specified session. To do that, we use this little function here. I use this in all my scripts that require detecting time sessions. So I'm not going to explain the code here. I've done that many times in other lessons and in the mastery course, but basically you can copy and paste this line of code into any script and it will detect if a bar falls within the given session. It takes a parameter here, SESS is the time session that you pass in. In this case, it's going to be this string here, 8 a.m. 0800 to 3 p.m. 1500. This is the time session we want to detect. So in other words, this string will look like this when we pass in this time session into this parameter. This is the string that we will be passing into the time function. Now this one, two, three, four, five, six is the days of the week. So if you wanted to only detect Mondays or Tuesdays or so on, um, you can put in the corresponding number there. So now that we have a function that can help us detect when a bar falls within the time session we're looking for, the next thing we need to do is save yesterday's high, low and close. To do that, I'm just using persistent variables. So the VAR keyword, we'll make sure these do not get reset on every new bar and we can update them only when we need to. So these variables track price action as it's traveling around through the session. And then when the session ends, we save the highest high over that session, the lowest low over that session, and the closing price of that session into these variables. And these variables are the ones that get drawn onto our chart on the next day's trading session. So hopefully that makes sense. So moving on, the next thing we do here is create a persistent Boolean variable. And this is used to reset today's high, low, close uh, tracking variables, these variables here. So on the first bar of a new session, today's high, low and close all get reset so that we can update them for the next day's trading session. And we just keep leapfrogging throughout price action. So to update these variables, we check, is the current bar inside the session we want to detect? So time session is this user input here. 
if the current bar falls within this session, then this code gets uh, executed. The first thing we do is check if this is the first bar of a new session, then we reset today's high to the current bar's high and today's low to the current bar's low, and we turn off this Boolean. So we set it to false. That way we don't keep updating today's high um, on every bar. We only want to reset these variables on the first bar of a new session. That's what this Boolean helps us to do. So once this code gets executed, this Boolean is set to false and this code no longer is relevant. And then this code becomes relevant. And this code is checking if the current bar's high is greater than the bar high that we've saved into today's high variable, then we reassign today high to this bar's high. So whenever a bar exceeds our saved session high, uh, we save that new high and we keep updating that until the end of the session. And then that gives us our red line. Um, our blue line is the same, but opposite direction. We're checking if the current bar's low is less than the low we've saved for today. If so, we update that variable and that's it. We're tracking the session high and low. And then all that's left to do is save those variables at the end of the session so that we can draw them on the next session. Now to do that, we have this else block of code. So if we are inside the session we want to detect, this code gets executed. So if we're not in the session, this code gets executed. Now I just realized I can move these into this if statement here and uh, get rid of this market high, low, close. So if we are not in the trading session, we want to highlight or analyze, and this is not the first bar of a new session, then we save today's high into yesterday's high. We save today's low into yesterday's low, and we save this final bar's closing price into yesterday's close. Then we set this flag, Boolean, first bar of new session to true. And now every bar that prints outside of this session that we're detecting, uh, this code will no longer get executed. We've already saved yesterday's high, low, close. And then when the first bar prints inside the time session we're looking to detect on the next day, remember we've set first bar of new session to true. And so the very first bar that starts a new session, this will be true. This code gets executed. First bar of new session is set to false and we just keep repeating. So every new day we cycle through, we save and update today's high and low. And then at the end of the session, we save all that information. And then all that's left to do is plot it onto the chart. And so my code here is a little bit complicated looking. We could technically get rid of um, all of this ternary operator stuff if we wanted to. The problem with this, as I've written in the comment here, if I save my code and get rid of those ternary operators, those conditional operators, you can see we have these weird connecting lines now, connecting all of the sessions and it just looks strange. I, I don't like the look of it at all. And so to fix this, I added in this little bit of code here. And all this code does is it checks if yesterday's high is not equal to yesterday's high on the previous bar, that means that we just updated the value. And if we just updated the value, then we want to plot NA or nothing. Otherwise, if we did not just update the value and this line is the same value as it was on the previous bar, then we just want to plot that value. And what this will do if I save my code now is when a new session begins, we get a one bar gap between our lines and it looks a lot tidier. As you can see, um, it's just easier to read and our charts are less cluttered. And then finally, we have our debug code here, which just checks if debug is turned on, if it's turned on, and the bar that this script is currently running on falls within our time session in the settings menu. Then we change our background color to green with 90% transparency. Otherwise, we do not change the background color. And then, um, of course, we also pass in the time zone that we want from the settings menu. In this case, that's GMT or UTC. To pass in a specified time zone, we just add that onto the end of our time function here as a extra parameter. If you omit this, then the time function will just reference the exchange time zone, I believe. Uh, but anyway, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you found this interesting. As always, the source code will be below. If you want to learn more about PineScript and take your trading to the next level, go check out my courses at pinescriptmastery.com. And with all that out of the way, I hope you have a fantastic week. Good luck with your trading and your coding. And I'll speak with you in the next lesson. Take care.